Hello, listeners, and thank you for joining me for another episode of Trend Talks. During this episode, we'll be sharing another journey, a journey of one of us, Michael Borch, currently a tax senior manager. Michael, thank you for joining me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Michael, your journey is quite particular. My first memory of you is discussing HC methods um, in the office. And obviously your role now is quite different. How old are you? Remind me a bit. I'm 36. Okay. So from where you started your studies till now, can you share a bit your journey? I believe it might be quite inspirational as well for students or people who um, might not think that sort of the first study they do, they need to be successful in it or they have doubts as to whether they made the right choice in their career. I believe by listening to your journey, it could be helpful as well for them. Okay, yes, of course. Um, so... Yeah. My journey, I think it can go all the way back to, I would say, university times, right? So Mm -hmm. um, at university, I started with psychology. The reason being was that I had done um, biology and chemistry as A-levels, which was (laughs) very much in line with what my parents used to do, who were both pharmacists. Um, And I I started, like we're saying, with psychology. um, And it was always a bit of a, a voyage of discovery. So... I knew I wanted to go to university. I wasn't quite sure at the time what I wanted to do. Um, Psychology looked like an interesting subject. Um, I had gone to a few um, talks about it and it was something I was like, "Ah, this this sounds interesting. So um, it it was the path I chose at the time. And it was a path that sort of always evolved. So, you know, okay, psychology, there are a lot of fields in psychology, and one of which was organizational psychology. Okay, so it was a bit, um, a bit of an exposure, if you'd like, to the business world. So, so even there, there were certain placements in certain organizations, mm-hmm. including big four organizations, and I was immediately attracted to, to it. Me. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so I was like, mm, this is this is an interesting, an interesting combination. Yes, exactly. Line of line of work, mm-hmm. in psychology, and that. And I, I, I always had that impression that this is something that. I would be interested, you know, to to pursue a career in, um, and, and obviously this this is with me contrasting other areas of psychology where where at the same time I'm sort of confirming I do not want to do other things. Um, so then when the, the the degree when I finished reading the degree, sort of I was faced with okay, what what what's next? What should I do now? At the time I was I twenty one years old, and I was considering okay, should I pursue a career in psychology, you know, is there anything else I can do? And again, I was, I was sort of exploring what there is around. And <laughs> I came across sort of, you know, the possibility of doing an MBA, um, uh, which was again, interesting to me. And I said, okay, you know what, let's, let's go for it. So I, I, I didn't feel it was the right time to start working or, or maybe I didn't have, you know, um, the aptitude at the time to start working or the want to start working rather. So, so I said, let me, let me continue studying. And, and I did a full-time, a full-time MBA, which was over two and a half years because I had one year where it was a bit of a transitional year because, um, I didn't have sort of the, the appropriate credits sort of to go in mm-hmm. for it. So, um, you get up to speed, basically, you know, you have credits in accounting, marketing, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, that year again was a very pivotal year, I would say, for me because during that year, I discovered accounting. It was the first time I discovered accounting, and and <laughs> you know, it's it's like one of those subjects where you really, you know, I I really found an inclination towards. It's it's like one of those things where all of a sudden it's like a light bulb would have gone, mm-hmm. and I was like, that nah, this this is this is something I I really I really you know um, would like to explore. And did more. that impact your studies then? It did. No, I mean, it did a lot. So, so at that time, you know, when I'm doing this, this course, I spent a lot of time learning the subject. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so I mean, I went from nothing to, to, you know, having to come to a level at university level of, of accounting. So I, I, I put in the hours to be fair. It was, it was not really studying to me. It was, it was always exploring. So always exploring and learning and, and, you know, okay. The fact that you have to do an exam is, is like secondary at that point in time. My, my perspective was like, I'm really enjoying learning around, you know, about accounting at the time. Um, and then when, when I did that again, I, when I finished the MBA sort of again, crossroads. So what, what now? So the, the MBA was quite generic in the sense that, you know, you learn a lot about, you know, marketing. Mm-hmm. 
um, human resources, you don't know about accounting. Um, and at the time, there was this opportunity with PwC um, in, in human resources, in HC. Um, so, you know, I, I came, I met, you know, the, the, the partners at the time who, who, who were heading the, the HC and... I mean, I, I loved the place. Okay. So, so I came to the place and I had my interviews over here. Obviously back then COVID was <laughs> not something that, that anyone would, would even mm-hmm. think about. Think. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, I came to the place, I looked around and yeah, it, it was immediately attractive. And, and, you know, I said, yes, I see myself, I see myself working in this type of work. Would you say at that point you already had an inclination to work in accounting rather than in human capital? Um, so accounting was always that subject which I dedicated more time towards. So like like I said, even when studying it, I didn't look, I didn't really see the hours go by. You know, I, I used to work through the, the the questions and and really want to understand what's happening. If you know what I mean. So mm-hmm. it's really like preparing for an exam. Obviously, you do it for an exam, but at the same time, you're enjoying absorbing the knowledge. So I would say yes. I always I always came here with that inclination towards mm-hmm. accounting. Um, but I was still, you know, I was still in this discovery phase, I would say. Um, and, and I did an, I, a year in HC. So, um, you know, working mainly with, I would say, recruitment, training. Um, but at the same time, I'm exposed to this wealth of, um, of, of knowledge, um, wealth of, um, of, of experiences of people around me. So even the fact that back, back then I used to sit, surrounded by senior managers in, in, in audit. And, and I mean, I was exposed to the jargon that they're discussing and on the problems that they're trying to solve on a daily basis. And I used to be, you know, I was like, wow, I mean, you know, <laughs> that, that sort of, uh-huh. you know, like, like a child listening, you know, in, in, on something that to be honest, uh-huh. I wasn't really understanding, but, but you can see, you know, the way they, 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 they were, you know, handling themselves, the way they were tackling the solution, the way they were speaking to clients on the calls. It was, it was extremely interesting. And, and again, I had an inclination towards wanting to do that. So again, then, <laughs> you know, I thought a bit through, I, I, I researched ACCA and, 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 and similar, similar courses. And I decided, yes, you know, it's time, it's time for me to do the ACCA. So it took me. Anyway, you were still already, you were already at the right place. <laughs> I was, and that obviously plays a big part because it's not, it's not, it wasn't, that wasn't as much a shot in the dark, I would say as, as the others, because. Right. I was seeing what the work would entail to a mm-hmm. certain extent, obviously. Um, and, and I could see also the, the, the career, the career, the career line in the sense, um, yes. Okay. HC has its, its career parts and, and all of that, but, but obviously in, 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 in a place like PwC where, um, the majority, I would say of, of the people work, you know, in accounting advisory tax, I mean, the, the, the career progression was not as blurred. So that was, that was also something that I took into, took into consideration. Mm-hmm. Especially for you loving the subject, yes. probably made it more tangible it did. and reachable. It did. it did, it did. And, and, and obviously, I mean, I look at what my peers are doing. Um, you know, I was interested in what they were doing, you know, going off to clients, going off to meetings, um, being involved in these small teams, you know, performing audits and all of that. It was, it was, it was for me very, very attractive. Um, and, and that's what I did. So, I had a, I had a chat with, obviously with my, with my senior manager at the time, and there was this opportunity and, and I took it. So, so I started my HCA and at the same time I started working, um, in audit, which, which was a baptism of fire for me because you're thrown a bit in the deep end, but obviously that's how you learn. Um, but, but I, 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 I soon, you know, I soon managed to, you know, take hold of the reins and, and, and again, steer my career in, in that direction. And it was. It was like that. I mean, I, I kept progressing. I mean, I finished my CCA while, while with PwC um, and, and I, I reached a level of, of assistant manager, manager level now, um, with PwC working, working in audit. But <laughs> there was always at the back of my mind, um, there was always at the back of my mind, this area in accounting, if you'd like, which always was the most fascinating, I would say, because obviously everything is, 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 is interesting. But for me, taxation was, was, I think always that area that I used to enjoy, you know, reading about or studying the most. 
Mm-hmm. And as they say, taxation, either you love it yes. or you hate it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I remember, I mean, studying, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, I remember studying with my cousin um, while we were doing the ACCA. So I was, I was an older at the time. And I remember telling me, you know, you, 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 you one day will finish, you will end up in, 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 in tax. And, and I mean, nowadays, I mean, we can say he was right. 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 <laughs> but, but in the meantime, I mean, again, I, I always had this, um, I, I, I wouldn't say urge, but this want to know what happens outside PwC to a certain extent. So I also did a year outside of the firm. So, um, once I reached audit, um, and sort of, you know, I, I worked in audit, I, 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 I took the decision, listen, you know, I don't see myself, um, you know, spending my entire career in audit. So, so I decided, you know, I wanted to do a change. So again, opportunity came up and I, I moved outside the firm and, and I took up a, a sort of a finance manager role, um, a bit of a finance controller. So, so again, looking, looking very much, um, at a company from a different angle. So no longer as an auditor, but now actually the one preparing, you know, the books and, and handling the day-to-day finances of the company. So, so, um, it was an, an industry job. It was in financial services, very interesting. Um, but I quickly realized it was not for me as well. So, um, um, so again, I was looking to, to move. And, and in fact, that was probably the shortest stint, um, that I ever did, you know, um, in, in a job. So it took about 11 months and, and then, um, lo and behold, <laughs> the opportunity opened up again to join PwC in tax mm-hmm. and I pounced on it. Um, and, and to be honest, I, 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 I've been doing that ever since. So that was around, I think 2015 now. Um, I, I, I rejoined in, in the grade I left, so it was an AM grade and, and I worked myself up today to, to senior management. So. Can we say that now you feel settled? Y- yes. Yeah. I, I or I we can so. never say that so. with you. I mean, you can never say, <laughs> you know, you know, it is the future is very hard to predict, but, um, as, 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 as job satisfaction wise and, and, you know, um, the, the job variety itself, I, I'm, I'm very, very satisfied where I am. So. No plans. Mm-hmm. no plans. I wanted to pick up a bit on the variety aspect, in fact, because your interests and expertise within tax are very varied as well. Can you give us a bit of a background about your, the, I would say, the topics or technical areas you mainly handle? Yeah, what I like, what I like about tax, or or one thing I like about tax is the the possibilities it gives you of of working not only in in different topics in in topics in tax itself so also working with different industries and and the evolution of tax is i mean it's 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 probably i mean second to none in the sense that you know every year you know you have you know a budget or 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 some sort of of event and 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 rules change and then you know in an international sphere again something happens and and you have changes that come into your taxation. So, so it's always, always evolving, always evolving. I mean, obviously many subjects do, but I find that in tax, it happens, um, at a rate that, that to me, um, keeps me on my feet. Mm-hmm. It keeps me on uh-huh. my toes. The way you're describing yourself as someone who loves to experiment, yes, to learn yes, yes. this constant change in tax exactly. probably fits in with your needs and wish to continue evolving yourself as well. That, that's it. And, and you also get the, the opportunity, I would say, to, I mean, like all that you learn a lot about, about different, different industries, about how they operate. But even, even tax offers you the opportunity. Obviously, it's, you're focusing more on a tax element, but, but through certain projects, certain deals, certain transactions, you're explo- you're, you're being exposed to, to so many interesting things. Um, that, you know, I would say that no one day is identical. I mean, there are th- that element of, of, of repetitive tasks, I would say, obviously that's, that's probably you're going to find it in, in, in most things that you one would do. So for example, I mean, you know, certain compliance things, certain, you know, returns, they, they tend to be a bit, you know, repetitive, but, but even in those, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's an extremely interesting experience because, you know, you start off by reading the financial statements and, and, and trying to understand you know, the taxation of certain items and all. so, so there's always, there's always something that, 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 that is interesting and, and, and something for you to, I, I think, absorb and grow yourself professionally from every single task you do, I would say. Agreed. Um, so you are, um, 
obviously very busy with your work. You're a father as well. Yes. But I am aware as well that you have quite a number of hobbies which are not your typical hobbies. Can you share a bit of that with our listeners? Uh, yes, yes, for sure. I mean, like you said, I'm a father. So, so I mean, time now has become you know probably a commodity which is very rare if you you can understand the time you have is not yours <laughs> yeah, exactly so so um uh, but yes i mean one of my one of my one of the things i enjoy doing the most let's put it that way is is i mean fiddling around i would say with with music so 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 personally um i enjoy composing music so I enjoy playing music as well. So, so when I was young, um, I, I, I started playing the piano, although it wasn't something that I really enjoyed doing. But when I, when I sort of grew older, sort of, I, I had this inclination towards the guitar. Um, and I, I started learning how to play the guitar, um, alone, a few lessons here and there picking up, you know, I, w- I was in a band. So, so again, there's that, that element, you know, you're, you're, you're a bunch of people in a garage, that, you know, um, um, all, all sort of, you know, close by each other. And, and, and you learn a lot, you know, because you, you go to other, other bands, you, you look at what they're doing and, you know, you have a chat and, and, you know, I used to, I used to learn that way, I would say. Um, also I used to, I used to enjoy, you know, composition in the sense, um, trying to make my own let's say music um and trying to evolve it and stuff like that you have studied theory or it's something that you have learned yourself as well um so i had i had a bit of background in theory so so when i was learning the piano i was also learning theory albeit it wasn't it wasn't for a long period of time it was enough for me to appreciate mm-hmm. um uh, what 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 one can do with music i would say i mean what was a, a changing point for me um, in, 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 in sort of this, this journey of composition, I would say was, there was this game on, on the PlayStation, right? Okay. So, yeah. So, so <laughs> it was, I think something called music generation for the PlayStation, something on those lines. I was, I was around 14, 15 at the time and, you know, you know, making music on the PlayStation, that, that, that sounds weird. I mean, but, but, you know, I, I really delved into it and really started discovering, you know, what one can do, you know, by putting this, that together and, and, you know putting a beat underneath and all of that and sort of even even how one should compose a song sort of the different parts of a song and, and stuff like that so i mean to be fair it was it was a good excuse for me as well because at the time i used to tell my mom no no i'm not playing on the playstation i'm i'm, I'm composing on the playstation so <laughs> it's not it's not it's not it's mm-hmm. not time good reasoning. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly so i used to use it to my advantage but i mean i had a friend at the time who was also very much into it so so we used to spend a lot of time together sort of you know learning from each other so you know i would say look i composed this piece and i say yeah I and, and then we try and put them together and something of the sort you know um so so that 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 was that was very much the beginning i would say of uh, my love of composition then obviously I, I i you know i learned when i was a bit older you know about these digital audio workstations and, and i used to you know buy the buy the software and and, and always you know Try and keep ahead of, of 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 the technology or whatever it is. Although now, to be honest, I I, I fell a bit behind. Um, YouTube for YouTube was was obviously a great source of information. So, I mean, there there's an element that you try and discover yourself, but there's also a big element that you would learn, you know, from 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 seeing others do it, from you know, from these tutorials on YouTube and and, and stuff like that. So, I mean, I did have a bit of a background of theory, but then it evolved sort of beyond, I would say, theory. In fact, I mean, the, the, the workstations that I use to make music, it's not really um, composition in your traditional sense. So it's not a manuscript, you know, with the five lines, mm-hmm. you know, treble clef, bass clef, and, and, and writing, writing using that way. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's all electronically done, mm-hmm. you know, it's all sort of graphs. And uh, we can also say that technology is one of your passions, so yes, yes. No, no. <laughs> it fits in once again. It does, it does fit in a lot. So, so I mean, these workstations themselves are, are extremely sophisticated programs and they use sophisticated macros and, 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 and whatnot. So, so even, you know, from, from, from creating a song, you know, it's, 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 it's fascinating just, you know, seeing how a macro can change, you know, the, the, the tonality of a, of a sound, how it can change, you know, various things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, to be fair, in our days, um, I, I mostly spend my time when I have time 
um, that I can dedicate towards music and playing the guitar. So, so COVID, you know, if you want to call it a silver lining, um, sort of helped me sit down more and, and play guitar. I bought, I don't know how many more guitars during COVID. So it was a bit of a, <laughs> you know, a, a, a buying spree, I would say, because uh, my guitars were a bit old and then it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's time to, to upgrade. The opportunity. You buy uh-huh. one, you buy another, blah, blah, blah. Um, and, and yeah, so, so nowadays I would say I, 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 you know, I enjoy it when I have the time to sit down mm-hmm. and grab a guitar. Mm-hmm. Um, from our conversation, it's very easy to see that whenever you decide to do something, you dedicate time to it. You're very passionate and energetic towards it. Um, our time is almost up. Um, in all these podcasts, we always at the end try to pass on a message, a message to our listeners, especially to the younger generation. Mm-hmm. Um, considering your journey and what we have been discussing what would be your message to people, students who are currently deciding on their career path, who possibly are unsure about the next steps to take? What would be your suggestion? Yeah, I think, so I think when when someone comes to, or this is my perception, but I think when someone comes to choose a career, I think certain decisions are done very early in life. You know, we have to choose subjects at a certain age and, 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 you know, have a certain inclination because either, you know, a parent or whatever it is, this is in that direction. So we tend to take a number of decisions at a young age and we tend to stick with them. And many times we might not be aware that, listen, it's, it's not, it's not impossible to change. It's not impossible to explore what there is. So, I mean, my message would be, listen, particularly if you're, if you're, if you're at university and, and I mean, explore what there is. Okay. So it's, it's, it's obviously a, a, an interesting time, um, because you get to learn a lot of things and you have the time to read around the subjects and all of that. So, so use that time, even, you know, maybe not, not just to, you know, stick on the part that you are on or, or rather, even if you would have finished whatever course it is, don't, mm-hmm. don't necessarily feel, I would say that you have to continue. Mm-hmm. Like an obligation. I don't think exactly. I mean, I, I always, I always used to, when I have these decisions, maybe I always used to think to myself and say, listen, okay, I have, I have this choice. And, and, and what always used to push me to do something, you know, ACCA, the MBA and all that is like, would I regret it if I wouldn't have done it? So if, if I'm it's like trying to put myself, um, in a frame of mind, like two, three years, four years down the line, would I regret it if I wouldn't have done this? And, mm-hmm. and, and it has helped me in the sense taking these tough decisions and to be honest, steering in a in a direction which now I feel happier doing what I'm doing. Right. So so I think I think happiness is very important, right? So so we're we're going to be doing a career for a long period of our time. It's important that you enjoy doing what you're doing. It's important that you're happy doing what you're doing. And if you're not, you're not enjoying it, you're not happy. I think the message is that it's 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 fine, you know. There are other opportunities. Mm-hmm. There are other parts that one can take. True, and possibly your psychology studies helped you as well in being able to take these bold and strong decisions as well. Yeah, I mean, psychology. Psych, I think psychology is one of those subjects that you know should be included in, in, in various in the uh-huh, studies. Earlier on. It, mm-hmm. it helps you. It it teaches you certain techniques. It it helps you. It helps you stop to think as well sometimes and, and even, you know, to meditate or, 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 you know, structure the way you're going to take a decision in a certain way. Um, and obviously it also helps many other ways because obviously it helps you interact with other people and, and learn how to interact with other people, how to show empathy and, and understand what empathy is and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. it's, it's crucial and, and I'm sure, I mean, even if it's unconsciously, but like the, the, the fact that I did psychology did help oh, shape I agree. where I ultimately ended up. Thank you, Michael. Very interesting discussion. And thank you for sharing your journey with me and with our listeners. Um, My final thank you goes to our listeners for tuning in and obviously watch this space for the next episode.